<sighs> Take a deep breath in and let's get into it. Hey everyone, my name's Fola and welcome back to my channel. So glad to have you join me here today. I wanted to come and share with you a bit about a very powerful meditation technique and a retreat place that you can go to because I believe they're almost everywhere in the world at this point, and that is Vipassana meditation. So I went to Vipassana meditation, I believe it's been almost two years now. Time flies. <laughs> Might have been three, but I'm pretty sure it's two. <laughs> Anyways, my friend and I had gone and we were looking forward to this. There's a lot of like preparation time in terms of applying and getting yourself kind of set up to go because these are 10 day silent meditations. And believe it or not, they have even longer ones like 20 and 30 day and I think even two months. <laughs> it's a little intense, I think. <laughs> But this has, was like one of the most beautiful experiences I could have and one of the most challenging, <laughs> to be honest. But leaving that retreat center and making my way back to the city was like just so, so magical. So I want to talk a bit about what it is. So Vipassana was a meditation technique which kind of really hit, I guess, more popularity over the last whatever is it like 50 years that I don't really know all the history about it but uh, Gwangaji is like the teacher who brought it I guess you could say to a lot of the western world from what I understand but the whole idea is that Vipassana is the meditation technique that the Buddha um Buddha himself, I guess, was the one that kind of brought that forward and taught how to really connect to the like trueness of who you are into just the body and the space and then into like nothingness is what I would define it as. And so it's a very powerful healing um, meditative technique. And the thing about Vipassana, which kind of irked me, I would say, is that they're very strict about their practice and how and who can practice it. And even just the like process of applying for it was kind of annoying, <laughs> in my opinion. But I understand as someone as like a Reiki practitioner doing all these other healing modalities and things, uh, the plant medicine stuff, like they don't really like that stuff too much and they're adamant like when you go to vipassana retreat that you cannot mix in any other meditative technique any energy work or healing can't do yoga like asana yoga where you're holding poses as a form of exercise and you can't even journal actually they don't want you to have your journals there which when you're there, you will learn why that is. Um, and I'm sure there's lots of people, because I've talked to some people who've kind of broken those rules, but I would say if you're going to do this technique and commit yourself for the 10 days, then do it the way they've described it for <laughs> you. Because uh, that's really how you'll get like the most benefit. And so they separate men and women. Um, you basically spend 10 days in like silent meditation early morning wake ups, it's like four something in the morning, you're woken up with bells and you go through the same routine pretty much every day of waking up, meditating for like two hours, having your breakfast, having a little break, meditating <laughs> for another while, lunch, meditating, eating, meditating, resting, walking outside, like it's just a continual cycle. And then in the evening they have a discord from, or discourse I guess, teaching from the teacher. And it was really interesting to, I guess, see how much your body and your mind can endure because this, I don't know, I guess I've kind of changed my viewpoint around some of this stuff. I don't feel like we have to suffer pain or put our bodies through excessive pains like you know you had those like flagellant people during the black plague going around and like tormenting themselves for the sake of 
the blood of Christ or I don't really know what they were doing, but we've kind of, you know, be told like, we got to fast, we got to like do these things and like be hard on our body. Like our body is this evil thing or whatever. Don't really agree with some of that stuff. I feel like pleasure is like a good thing and we can have a balance, like everything in moderation. But Vipassana really taught me like how much like my mind and my willpower has over my body and vice versa um the connection between my body and like that will or the mind and that I could actually (laughs) endure way more of like kneeling for two hours every moment or sitting in like an upright position where you know you might want to like just go to bed and not do that thing uh (laughs) you would be surprised so definitely Vipassana is not an easy task, but it is possible. And I really want to encourage you, if you're interested, to experiment with that. Uh, It's a free uh, opportunity. You sign up and they feed you vegetarian meals. There's all these other rules you can't swear. I mean, you're not talking, so... I guess you're not supposed to swear in your head, too. Um, No talking, no, like, engagement, really, with anyone else. And it's funny, actually, now that I think about it, just going back to it, because what was happening, uh, like, I personally could see the connection between mental health, uh, specifically, like, uh, psychosis and some of these, like, perceptual disturbances that can happen for people and an altered state of mind. Because when we first started into the meditation, I was relatively okay and calm but after time it's like you start to separate from who you think you are and who you actually are like this consciousness who is the observer just like aware of everything and so like my I was having thoughts or like scripts that were playing that weren't the most positive and I could like observe it and so there was almost like this split was occurring which is interesting because when we talk about schizophrenia like it's like split mind is kind of what they would describe that as right i think that's actually what that's like what the phrase schizophrenia means and so there's something about that like there's something that we're meant to learn there and and to process but it wasn't the most comfortable thing uh i definitely had days where i was like am i like going insane the paranoia and like the anxiety and the fear Uh, It was like the most intense probably that I've ever felt. And then the fact that I was just there silent, having no way to really, you know, distract myself with my phone or talk to a friend or like, you know, listen to music where I could just like shut out, you know. And um, it's not that you're left to your own devices because there are staff like volunteers and the teachers that are there too. And they have periods of time where you can talk to them. Uh, That was like a godsend. (laughs) Pretty sure the teacher was talking to me way more than probably should have, but uh, I felt really blessed about that because otherwise I think I might have actually, (laughs) because it was like just the things that were coming up. I was like left. I remember at the end, um, because at the end they like kind of have like a little gathering everyone and they had all these materials out. Uh, and at this point I still wasn't really talking because everyone, like everyone around was just engaging. And I was like, I'm like not here. Like I was like in some other realm though present with like the physical world. And I went and saw this book and in this book was this illustration, um, of like the Buddha. And when the Buddha reached enlightenment, it's like he was meditating under this tree. And from what I understand, from the image and the book and everything was he basically was tempted by this like goddess or I think she was like the daughter of like some demonic sort of evil entity and so she came she was trying to seduce him with all these things and pleasantries and all that stuff and it didn't work and then the father like demon creature or whatever he came and he was trying to then scare and cause fear Uh, to the Buddha to throw him off like his path of meditating and I saw this image and I was like holy smokes like that is exactly what was happening for me I remember periods of time in the meditation like I would see like people trying to like like my eyes were closed by the way like seducing me and like naked people and like 
these like images to like lead me into like fantasizing and just like the pleasure and then food like because you're eating like a vegetarian very I'd say not bland like it was good food actually there's a lot of things I'm like ooh that was yummy but just simple simple meals that you know can't go get your McDonald's or these other like your pizza and stuff that you have access to in the city uh but it was like this temptation in my mind's eye and then I would easily get like pulled to it and then I'd have to go oh nope back to the meditation doing the scans doing the thing and then it would switch to like fear and for me that fear would be a lot of times of like me losing my mind and also fear of people in my life dying or something horrible happening to me like physically me not being safe and I remember at one point meditating and I like could see my child like dead. <laughs> and I instantly was like, oh my God, she's dead. Like she's dead. And I'm here meditating and I have no way to reach her because I don't have my phone. They take your phones from me, by the way. They take your keys too, so you can't just like drive off, <laughs> which makes sense. Cause if I just like left in the state, that probably would not have been good. Uh, and it was just like, yeah, frightening. And then I remember this other time meditating in the bedroom because usually I'd meditate in the hall, but then sometimes I was like, I just need to be on my own, just meditate in the room. And I felt like this was like the longest time of meditation and I could hear this like bee or a wasp or something outside the window of the bedroom. And I swear, it was like, <laughs> What, my eyes were closed, so my mind's trying to create the story. <laughs> this bee or this wasp just keeps trying to like penetrate through this window. And I was like, that wasp is coming to kill me. Like, I've never been stung, so I don't know. I have this fear I'm like allergic. And I could hear it. It was like getting louder and louder and louder as I was going through this meditation trying to like keep focused like inside trying to just like let go of that fear of like you know and then it just like hit me oh well i guess if it comes in here and i get stung like that i get stung <laughs> but it was like a torture of like probably 30 minutes probably it was even like 10 minutes let's be honest but it seemed like forever but it like was those type of fears of death of unsafeness of insecurity i guess and when I saw this image of the Buddha in this book and experiencing these things, it just clicked. It's like, this to me is the devil. Like this is when we talk about evil trying to tempt us and distract us and all that. It's like, it's just our own inner mind. It's literally just like the ego <laughs> trying to be like, yo, like don't go within, don't heal and da 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 da. Uh, and yeah, it was really, really fascinating to come to these understandings. And there's like lots of other things that came up and um, it was just really overall, like I feel proud of myself being able to see it through and to have experienced it. Um, definitely an intense uh, experience. And, you know, they, within Vipassana, if you ever do choose to go that path, they have their own like restrictions, I guess, on who is able to go, which I mean, I guess, honestly, I can kind of see after. Um, and also I kind of led, led me to a bit of a um, egoic crisis of who am I? <laughs> you know, especially when it's like, oh, I can see why they didn't want us to do Reiki because we don't need Reiki. Like we can just heal our bodies. Like just this is just everything. And then it led to a few days of like, well, then if I don't practice Reiki, like, who am I? What am I? Like, what is all of this purpose? Uh, so that was kind of scary. <laughs> but it passed. And the integration period after, like I mentioned, leaving uh, was just beautiful. Like animals were like, you know, like a heron. I didn't even know we had herons in Alberta. Like almost like sideswiped my vehicle as I was driving. And I was like, holy smokes, like... These animals and the nature just seem to like communicate and I feel like it's because we'd entered into this like vibratory state of just complete stillness and it was so beautiful and the integration back was also very interesting just this amount of like love and like this vibration that I could feel like emanating from from me it was just like so beautiful and I can see why it's important then to continue with that meditative practice as often as you can 
So I'd love to go back there, try it again. We will see. Um, not sure what I will be uh, have to look forward to at that point, but I trust that when it's time, it's time. And if that's something that you feel called to, then great. And if not, that's great too. I just thought I would come on here and share a bit of my story. So if you would like to, you can hit like, share this video to someone that maybe you think would find it interesting. And you can also hit the subscribe button and the little bell so that you're notified of any future videos. And until then, I will talk with you guys soon. Bye.